What the fuck is going on in the world? Well, Doom, the first person shooter that started it all, is receiving some new levels from its designer to celebrate its 25th anniversary. In other news, some cunt has discovered water on an asteroid. Could this be the discovery of alien life? And finally, classic Sega Saturn games, Panzer Dragoon 1 and 2, are coming out, receiving remakes next year in 2019. All that and more on The Johnny Massacre Show. Good to see you again. We've got more video game news today and a little bit of science news. Doom, that is a fucking amazing game. That was basically the first first person shooter ever. Actually, there was a game before it by the same developers called Wolfenstein, which was really good. But Doom was the one. Doom and Doom 2, absolutely classic games. Now we're going to get some more Doom, which is good for the people that never played it the first time around and also good for the fans of the series. So over on GameSpot.com, they say the original 1993 Doom released 25 years ago. That's a typo. I should say was released 25 years ago. And to mark the occasion, series creator John Romero has announced a new free expansion coming early next year. Sigil is a free mega award, the game given in the Doom community for fan-made content which adds nine single player stages and nine deathmatch levels. It will release in February 2019. Nine levels, is that all? Back in the days, people used to make video games in a small group of about 10 people in their mum's fucking basement slash bedroom. Nowadays, we've got teams comprising of hundreds of members. Are you telling me they can't make more than nine levels? You gotta be kidding. Anyways, the article continues. As detailed on Romero's site, you need a registered copy of the original 1993 Doom to play. Can you even get that anymore? It's intended as a spiritual successor to the fourth episode of Doom. Romero is also working with Limited Run Games to create two limited edition boxes. Both exclusive boxes include music from heavy metal band Buckethead, including one track made exclusively for Sigil and feature art from metal cover album artist Christopher Lovell. Okay, so they're going to release this in some retro form. One has a standard box with some interesting cover art, a 16 gigabyte USB stick made to look like a 3.5 inch floppy disks, which contains the extra content, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, this is all coming out sometime in 2019. So if you're a fan of Doom, you want to be Googling Doom on a monthly basis to make sure you can get these new levels. It's kind of weird that you need a registered copy of the original Doom. Even the people that have that have probably thrown away the box by now. So how the fuck anyone's going to play this? I don't know. But there's a trailer. <laughs> Let's watch the trailer. See what we get. Okay, so this is a very self-aware trailer. They know that Doom is old and they're kind of playing up the nostalgia a little bit on an Apple Watch. Now that is interesting. I still can't believe there's only nine new levels. God, that music. That's the music from the first level of Doom. It's kind of shit, but it's awesome at the same time. Classic. But there's even some claymation in here. I certainly wasn't expecting that. So we're getting the full history of Doom here from the first game to the most recent one. Funny, most of the content isn't what they're releasing at all. It's the modern Doom. But they know the current audience. They've got to sex it up a bit. I mean, look, if that isn't a precursor to Halo, I don't know what is. Looks so much like the Master Chief's helmet. So God bless Doom. Without Doom, first person shooters definitely wouldn't exist in the shape that they do today. 
In other news, apparently scientists have discovered evidence that there was water on an asteroid, which is kind of exciting, and it reads a little bit like the script to a science fiction movie whereby aliens infect the populace and start to take over the world and murder everyone. Over on sciencenews.org, NASA's OSIRIS-REx finds signs of water on the asteroid Bennu. The craft will spend 2019 scoping out the best spot to grab a handful of space rock dust. So the craft hasn't landed on this asteroid that apparently once contained water, or might even still do, but I certainly don't think so. And it's gonna land pretty soon. These things take time, obviously. The article says, as the asteroid Bennu comes into sharper focus, planetary scientists are seeing signs of water locked up in the asteroid's rocks. NASA team members announced December the 10th, so there might actually be some water in there. If there's water on this fucking asteroid, that means that there could be life, there could be fucking aliens, there could be plagues and diseases ready to infect the world. It's one of the things we were hoping to find team member Amy Simon of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt said in a news conference at the American Geophysical Union meeting in Washington DC. That's a mouthful. This is evidence of liquid water in Bennu's past. This is really big news. Okay, so again now we're looking to the past. Apparently there isn't actual water on the asteroid. There's just evidence that it once was there. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft just arrived on Bennu on December the 3rd. Over the next year, the team will search for the perfect spot on the asteroid to grab a handful of dust and return it to Earth. Very early in the mission, we found out Bennu was going to provide the type of material we want to return, said Principal Investigator Dante Loretta of University of Arizona in Tucson. It definitely looks like we've gone to the right place. So anyways, this asteroid, remember the name, it's called Bennu. Apparently there's some cool shit on there. So they're gonna land on it, dig up that cool shit, bring it back to Earth. If there was water, who knows what they might find there. Um, I'm very creative, so in my mind, there's definitely signs of alien life up there, but don't hold your breath. Final news for today. Do any of you actually know this game? It's called Panzer Dragoon. I remember when this came out on the Sega Saturn. I had a Sega Saturn when it came out. Sega's ill-fated console that was raped, metaphorically, by Sony's PlayStation, which was much better hardware. So I remember the first several games for it, including Daytona USA, that was a classic arcade game. And Panzer Dragoon was a very unique on-rails shooter, a 3D game. And it looked all right. Most of the games that came out for the Sega Saturn in the beginning all looked like shit. Even at the time, they looked like shit. Especially Daytona, because that was an arcade port. And the arcade was mind-blowing when it came out. And the Saturn was just horrible. It was letterbox for the European release. It ran at about 17 frames a second or less. And was just a real shit show. But in that first gaggle of games, I would say Panzer Dragoon, which came out a little after the launch, was one of the better Saturn titles across its whole lifespan and looked decent at the time. So that's saying something. It has a cult following. There's a Panzer Dra Dragoon 2 and there's even a Panzer Dragoon RPG and that goes for a lot on eBay. I think that goes for several hundred dollars. But apparently these, these games are getting remade. It's kind of a weird one. I guess Sega are gauging whether there's still any fan base remaining for Panzer Dragoon and they also want to see if they can pick up some new fans and if they can, who knows, maybe we'll get a new title. So go out and support this game because it was really weird and original. So this news is on VG Charts. It says Panzer, Pan, Panzer, Dragoon? Panzer Dragoon Remake and Panzer Dragoon 2, or 2, which is 2 in German, 2 Remake announced. Forever Entertainment announced it will work together with Sega to co-create and publish Panzer Dragoon Remake and Panzer Dragoon 2 Svi Remake. Here's a little bit of uh, art from the series. And there's your dragon, very cool looking dragon. Usually you imagine some over the top, huge reptile with big fangs looking like a winged T-Rex. But I like the way this dragon is a little bit understated, but it still does it like a fearsome creature that demands respect. Forever Entertainment together with Sega holding Limited from Japan will co-create blah blah blah. Panzer Dragoon Remake is a refreshed version of Panzer Dragoon. No shit, Sherlock. The original version of the game had its premiere on the Sega Saturn console in 1995, way back when, and was well received by both players and critics. The entire Panzer Dragoon series has been repeatedly remade and released on many platforms. The last relaunch took place in April 2018 on Xbox One where players can play Panzer Dragoon Auto with backwards compatibility. I think that was Panzer Dragoon 3. 
The new version of the game will be characterized by a completely new graphics compatible with today's standards and several modifications of the game making it more attractive to modern players while remaining faithful to the original in terms of story. The first materials from the game will be presented in the upcoming months. So I guess Panzer Dragoon Auto, which is a previous incarnation of Panzer Dragoon, has done pretty well, I guess, on Xbox. If it hadn't have done well, then I don't think Sega would have announced the remakes of the original game. So if you've never seen this before, I want to show it to you. Try not to laugh. This is the original Panzer Dragoon game on the Sega Saturn. Here we go. Episode one. Okay, I, I, I remember this. Look at the dragon. It's blue and white striped tail. Isn't that something? Um, this looks really kind of crappy by today's standards let's be honest the resolution is so poor the draw distance is pretty poor there's no kind of cell shading if that's what it's called it's very pixelated such was the sega saturn it really did get smashed by the playstation when it came out but listen to the music we've got some interesting kind of quasi-modern orchestral hybrid and i guess this game was also designed to be a little bit therapeutic. You've got the nice sound of the flapping wings as it's riding on the air currents. And as I mentioned, the orchestral music is there. And that together with the visuals, which are pretty colorful, kind of seems like the kind of game you want to play while doing yoga, I guess, if you had to bring it into the modern era, kicking and screaming. So let me just jump through this video a bit because the next part, you go into some cave or some shit. And as you can see, it's on rails. You can't go left or right. It's not free roaming. And you've got that little box in front of you, which you need to drag over enemies in order to lock onto them. And then you can fire these homing bullets, much in the same way Sega's Space Harrier game works, I guess. That's really old. Or Sega's popular, um, what was that game where you had a lock on? Afterburner, Sega released some kind of American jet fighter game way back in the day and it had the same attack system as you can see here so you can just use your um, automatic weapon there and hold it down and that's a manual aim or you can I think you hold down the button and then it locks onto multiple targets and then it, it all um, then you shoot these homing lasers so yeah it doesn't look that impressive but at the time it was pretty interesting because before this there basically weren't any 3d consoles so this was some of the first 3d ever but yeah that giant sandworm there so it's kind of, i don't know the idea is good and the actual graphical style is really nice the illustrations are nice but it hasn't aged well It'd be really interesting to see how that plays with a remake with modern graphics and a much smoother frame rate and hopefully they'll expand it add some new levels and who knows what else they'll put in so this was the second game panzer dragoon svai uh, that looks much smoother so you can see the developers had gotten to grips with the hardware at this point in the sega saturn's lifespan this must have been at least two years after the first one and it's the same kind of stuff today isn't it you have consoles coming out and then over the years, the developers start to master the hardware and then the graphics start to improve and various graphics engines come out which you can be licensed and so on. So graphics, of course, improve throughout a console's lifespan. And this kind of looks all right. I guess this is what they intended it to look like. And it's just that very unique style that makes this eye-catching and makes it intriguing. It's a nice hybrid of kind of Dungeons and Dragons style mythology with Japanese mechanoid anime, isn't it? So this looks much better. As for Panzer Dragoon Auto, if you'll bear with me for a second, I am kind of curious to see what that is because it mentioned that in the article that we just read. Ah, uh, this came out on the Xbox, I think. So this was, uh, I guess this was made by a completely different team. So it might not have been quite as good, but okay. So yeah, this is Panzer Dragoon in the modern era. So if you had, take a look at this now, you're kind of going to get a taste of what the remake's going to be like. And look, this looks absolutely beautiful. Oh, I do remember this now. And so imagine this, but times five with modern graphics. And I think you'll 
potentially going to get quite an interesting title. So yeah, video games galore, yet again on the Johnny Massacre show. Now let's talk about my life. I'm back on form. Hit the gym today. I skateboarded to the skateboarded to the gym. That took me 30 minutes. And then I did 100 kilograms on the bench press times two. And then I worked my way down from 100 to about 97, 95 and 90. I did 10 of those in total. Then I did two kickboxing um, mitts. And that f- fucking raped me. Then I went back to the bench press and I did 90 more with exponentially decreasing loads. And then I did seven chin-ups. I'm not very good at chin-ups. And then I did my ab routine, which takes about 15 minutes. And then I did some dumbbells. And then I skated back home. So I think I burn about 1,500 calories. So I'm definitely back in business tomorrow. I'm already looking forward to, not just because I get to make another Johnny Massacre show, but because I've done my exercise, so I'm in a good mood, feel good physically and mentally. I got my motherfucking chicken cooking in the oven. I cannot wait for that. I am so fucking hungry. And that's about it for today. So tomorrow I might be seeing my girlfriend. I'm on girlfriend duty. What we're going to do, I'm not sure, but she's getting quite business minded these days. And since I am a bit of a business genius, being able to generate income without doing any work whatsoever, I think my girlfriend is quite lucky to have me buy her size. And I'm going to give her a bit of business advice and try to generate some of those ones and zeros, motherfucker. And I'm not talking binary. So that's about it for today's show. I might be dropping a request for some questions for tomorrow's show on my YouTube community section. So look out for that. And that's about it for today. So thank you for joining me again, especially all you regulars. I know you're out there. I know you're out there. We've got a small kind of cult-like group and it means the world to me. And I do this for you. I know who you are. I do pay attention to who watches. So I will be seeing you tomorrow.